Hi, I'm Kai and today I want to start a new series on my channel, Tech Talk. In this episode I talk to Martin Düsterhus from Backup Automation about the MX system. The MX system makes it possible for the first time to automate machines and plants completely without control cabinets. For this purpose, Backup has bundled its automation know-how into a modular system that replaces all tasks and features of the classic control cabinet. Hey Marvin, thanks for your time on my channel. Maybe you can introduce yourself in a few sentences. Hi Kai, thank you for having me here. Um, my name is Marvin and I'm part of the product management team for the MX system at Bay of Automation. And yeah, today we're going to talk about the MX system, which is a pluggable and modular um, construction kit for cabinet-free automation. And um, yeah, we will talk about all the advantages and it saves a lot of time, a lot of money during the whole engineering process, but also um, installation time and system setup at the machine and even during the um, yeah the runtime of the machine um, for maintenance it um, yeah gives you lots lots of benefits yeah i'm curious now so let us have a look on your presentation nowadays all automized processes are equipped with a conventional control cabinet and these control cabinets they're housing all different components like for example ipcs motor starters io components but also not intelligent um, components like yeah, the fusing and protection and power supply. And if you now want to add the functionality to the machine, for example, connect the proximity switch, you need several of these components at the same time. So not only the IO component to connect the signal to the IPC, but also protection of the sensor, the power supply, the power distribution within the control cabinet, and now we're introducing MX system. An MX system has the same functionalities as the conventional control cabinet has, but in a whole new concept and a whole new form factor. The way MX system works is that we have a base plate that distributes all the voltages to the mounted modules on the base plate and connects it with either CAD to communicate to the modules. In this example, we have a 400 volt um, three phase main switch module. Internally, it has a 24 volt power supply. And this brings the voltages into the base plate. This is spread out throughout the whole entire base plate and then is available to the corresponding um, data connector for 24 volts and either cat for each module. And also the power connector that um, connects 400 volts um, to each module that needs this um, voltage. Additionally, we can also connect 48 volts and 600 volts to the modules. Therefore, we would need um, separate power supplies that are mounted on the base plate. We as Beckhoff provide a whole construction kit that you can build your machine topology. So, for example, we have different base plates to build the topology, distribute some base plates throughout the whole um, machinery. And we also have system modules that can be used to connect these different MX systems with each other, but also connect third-party devices like valve manifolds and um, frequency inverters from third-party um, companies, for example. We have relay modules to be able to connect heating elements and motor starters. We also have coupler modules to be able to communicate with different kind of um, bus, uh, bus communications. And we also have drive modules that we use for servo technology, our I.O. portfolio, where we can almost connect any sensor from the industry, and IPC modules that run the PLC. And if we now take a look on the MX system, how it would look like when the sensors and actuators are connected, you can see that we have a direct connection from a functional module to, in this case, an AC motor. So the whole functionality of connecting the AC motor is covered within one single module. So it has the mo a motor circuit breaker, it has the functional safety built in, the motor starter itself, and even the communication with either cat to diagnose the motor, for example, with the temperature and um, to run the motor. Same for I.O. modules. So we have, for example, here an um, encoder that is directly connected to a corresponding I.O. module. And this houses um, the fusing, so the protection of the sensor. The power supply is from the, um, directly from the back plane to the, um, connected to the sensor. 
and um, yeah, this is the way you can connect all the sensors and actuators from your machine with the MX system. If we now take a look on a conventional control cabinet and compare it with the MX system that covers exactly the same functionalities, we can see that in terms of dimensions, we have um, the same width of the MX system compared to the um, control cabinet in this case, but all other dimensions are way smaller. Also, the weight is reduced by almost two thirds and we need only 10% of the components to fulfill the requirements of the machine and to connect the same sensors and actuators. The circuit diagram only now has around a quarter of the amount of pages um, to describe the whole way of the um, connection of the machine, as we only need the functional modules and the connected sensors and actuators. In a conventional control cabinet, you would need information on how all these um, yeah, single components are wired with each other. We only need one tool to mount, the base uh, to mount the modules on the base plate and we can mount it in within one hour compared to the con conventional control cabinet. In our facility it took almost 30 hours to build the whole cabinet. The cooling, as we use passive cooling, we don't have any energy consumption on that. Um, the cabinet with the air conditioning needs around half a kilowatt hour um, for cooling the devices. And as we have EtherCAD within every single module, we are able to diagnose all the modules. And in a conventional control cabinet, we only have around 50% of um, EtherCAD integration. So there are a lot of components like maybe motor starters or power supplies that are not communicating with EtherCAD and has to be yeah, diagnosed with single wires again if the um, power supply, for example, is okay and so on. And if we now take a look into the um, circuit diagram of connecting, for example, six proxi proximity switches to a conventional control cabinet. We would need a page that covers the power supply, the protection of the 24 volts. We need some kind of potential distribution for the 24 volts throughout the whole machine and also to the sensors. We need an overview page on um, where the corresponding I.O. module is mounted in the bus topology. And we need the representation of the sensors itself and the connection to which channel of which I.O. module they are, uh, they are mounted. If we now take a look to our MX system, we can see that this is getting way easier. So we need basically only one page that gives you information on where the corresponding modules are mounted on the base plate. So in this case, an I.O. module. And a page where we can see to which channel of the I.O. module the sensors are connected. So in this case, again, six proximity switches. Uh, thanks, Marvin, for your presentation. I have a few questions about your system. First of all, I think the most important question for us is, do you provide data for ePlan? Yeah, sure. Um, we are drawing all the ePlan macros and will then make available on our website. Um, and you might already seen uh, one of the macros in, um, in the video. So there was a module where you saw the connected sensors and actuators and you might already get the feeling how this would ease up the process of um, the whole engineering process of the um, yeah the wiring diagrams and the e-plans. Yeah, that's quite nice. Thank you for this. It will save a lot of time for us. Before we forget it, we place also a few links below in the video description for more information about your system. If you are interested, click the links and there's also a link how to get in contact with uh, Beckhoff. The next question is about a basic panel. So when I think on a panel, it exists out of a main switch, a Cooper bar system, power distribution, MCCPs, conductors, and so on. Do you provide all of these in your MX system? Yeah, so we cover everything from the infeed of the mains from the customer um, until the, the um, yeah, modules where we can directly uh, connect the sensors and actuators. So the whole potential distribution and the protection is done in the system. So the base plate in the background does all the yeah, communication with EtherCAD and also um, distributes all the voltages that you need for your uh, field devices. And yeah, the protection itself is done within each module to protect the sensor or actuator that's connected. Yeah, quite interesting. So you don't just cover the I.O systems you also cover the whole really the whole cabinet 
from the yeah. income until the last sensor. That's uh, yeah, quite a full solution. But uh, the next question is, what are the limits from your system? I think when you have a really big motor or something like this, uh, where are the limits from your system? So we have one limit that's the maximum infeed. So um, we can infeed 400 to 480 volts. Uh, so for US grids or European grids, so cover almost anything on the on the planet. Um, and the maximum current that we can infeed um, is 125 amps. That's the limit to the design of the base plate, what we can cover. But another limit is um, the maximum current or um, power for one single device. And for example, for an FVD, it's around 15 kilowatts. And for a servo axis, um, it's 28 amps for a single um, servo axis. So you see if there's a, yeah, sometimes in a machine you have bigger motors, for example, a 55 kilowatt AC motor. Um, this is too big to be uh, yeah, driven by the MX system directly. So there you would need to think about um, a hybrid solution where you have still a small cabinet for this single device, um, but the rest can be then covered with the MX system. So the, the biggest actuator in your system uh, is the one that you might need to take care of if it's still possible to run it with the MX system or if you need a hybrid version with a, another control cabinet, but a small one. Yeah, but I think with these limits, you will already cover most of applications in industrial automation. So when I think on another yeah, daily daily task for me is revamping. And when we think on revamping, or maybe your customer has already some PLC from a different manufacturer. I know that Backhoff based on Ethercat. Uh, is it possible to communicate also with other systems? Yeah, so the MX system is based on EtherCAD, so the bus communication inside the system is EtherCAD, but we follow the same philosophy as we do with our yeah, the rest of our portfolio. So we have gateways um, where you can connect a slave for um, Profinet, for example, or even an IP um, scanner or something like that. But we can also have um, different coupler models. So instead of having an EtherCAD coupler that um, connects a uh, Back of a PLC, we can also use a Profinet coupler, for example, that can connect a Siemens PLC. Okay, good. That means you can integrate your system to all other as well. Um, yeah, I don't have any questions anymore. So if my community has more questions about the Back of MX system, please leave a comment. We try to answer it very soon. And if you liked the video, please drop a like and don't forget to subscribe my channel and activate the notifications. Hope to see you in the next video from Kai and Arvin.